Installing the Clark Metal Worker in my workshop. Instead of bolting the machine directly to a workbench, I fitted it to a piece of plywood first. The main problem that I had was, how do I get this machine from my kitchen table into my workshop? But thankfully, there is a builder working on part of my house currently, and he has a wheelbarrow. And better than that, the builder, who's about 10 years younger than I am, so he's not a young man, picked the machine up, put it in the wheelbarrow, wheeled it up the garden, took it out and put it in my workshop, which I thought was a very good thing to do. So just for a change, my back didn't hurt from moving heavy pieces of equipment. I lifted the machine up and simultaneously slid a piece of plywood underneath it, as you can see here. I didn't want the machine to be right at the front of the board, I wanted it to be behind, because it's only the guillotining part of this machine that requires quite a lot of force in a downward direction. I measured the position of the machine and it's now sat in the right place, but I couldn't mark out the holes at the front because the table's in the way. There's only one thing for it, the table needs to be removed temporarily. The first thing to go is the safety guard. And the next job is to remove the larger allen bolts that secure the table to the main casting. I've already removed the allen bolt at the other side, so this is the last one. And once this one's out of the way, I should be able to lift off the table and put it somewhere safe. I think it's time for a health and safety warning. Once the table was removed, the guillotine's blade suddenly became a very dangerous thing. It is extremely sharp. I will keep my hands well away from it. I've removed the two adjusters which allow the table to be moved towards the blade or away from it and now using my deep hole marker I can make a mark on the plywood through the holes in the casting. Yes this blade's definitely very sharp. When testing the sharpness of a blade with your fingers you must always move across the blade and never along it. I would recommend that you don't even go anywhere near the blade, it really is sharp. Not as sharp as my Roman gladius sword, but still sharp enough to do a lot of damage. I drilled four holes in the piece of plywood on the marks that are made using the deep hole marker. Then I countersunk these holes very deeply. And what I'm doing here is threading the piece of plywood. I'm using an M8 tap in my electric drill. The idea is to thread the wood, then I can screw the bolts into place, by doing this, the bolts are held very securely to the plywood. And the next part of the job is to screw in some bolts. I found these, and I found four of them. I don't know where they came from. But as they're painted green, maybe they were used to hold some large model steam engine onto a board. I don't know. I'm screwing these bolts very tightly into position in the plywood. And I'm really sorry that my screwdriver isn't big enough. This is the biggest one that I can find. I screwed the bolts in as far as they would go. Once I fit the nuts and washers on the other end of these bolts, they will probably get pulled a little bit tighter into the countersink. I won't show the screwing of every one of these bolts into the board. This is the second one. And thanks to my too small but very good quality Barco screwdriver, everything's fine. Because I'd marked the positions for the holes accurately, these bolts were in the right place. I lifted the machine up onto the bolts, and when I lined up the position of the holes with the bolts, the machine just slid into position. All I needed to do was fit a washer and a nut to the top of each bolt. In this clip, I'm carefully refitting the table, making sure that it's putting the right amount of pressure on the blade. It needs to be just right. I did exactly the same at the other side, so now the table is fully adjusted and should be OK. After a final check that I've tightened the bolts sufficiently, it's time for a test. A while ago in my series about modifying a simplex to look like a Great Western Railway prairie tank, I bought some card. Here's a sheet of it. And I used it to make a template for the boiler wrapper. The guillotine blade cut this perfectly, so everything's OK there. I'm turning the machine around to show you what's at the back of it, and this is what's at the back of it. I don't really know what that thing in the middle is, I haven't read the instructions. With the unit, there were two of these rods and a bracket. And here I'm showing the thing fitted. This is just a guide, and you have a choice of being able to fit it in the top holes if you want to use it for the metal bender, or in the bottom holes to use it with the guillotine. For my application, it will make it easier to make square boxes 
if I fit it in the top holes. When I use the guillotine, I will scribe a line on the piece of metal to be cut and line up the blade with that. This clip shows the piece of plywood is now screwed to the bench and the bench in turn is screwed to the wall, so it's all very secure. Now it's all together, once again I'm going to test the guillotine. And I can confirm that it's going to be really useful for chopping pieces of mahogany. This takes very little effort on my part. In order to apply more pressure, you simply extend the length of the arm. This is a piece of brass. To be honest, I'm being too gentle with the machine at the moment. I need to put a lot more pressure on the handle and then the pieces of metal will cut in one go. Just like an execution, it's better to bring the blade down in one blow rather than touch the metal and apply a lot of pressure. Using the metal folder part, I made this, and when I looked at it, I was really pleased. Without this machine, making parts that look like this would be difficult to do. And cutting things like this at an angle accurately was also very easy. So I'm going to have some fun with this machine. Not only will it speed up the process, it will allow me to make things that otherwise would have been difficult. I went to a local DIY store the other day because my first wife wanted to buy some tiles. While she was walking around looking at tiles, I was walking around looking at machine tools and I saw this thing and I thought, well, that looks to be quite clever. As you can see, it's a fitting for drum sanders and you just put the drum sander on and press the top and it clicks into position. Much better than the type that uses a small screw to expand a rubber block. A YouTube viewer asked me what lighting I used in the workshop, so I thought I would take this opportunity for the benefit of this viewer and others to show you. I have quite a lot of high power LED lighting in the workshop. The standard strip lighting fastened to the ceiling is also LED, but it's not powerful enough. When I first turn on the auxiliary lighting, everything looks very bright, but then the auto adjustment of the camera's iris makes it look okay. Immediately above the bench, I have one of these. It's called a softbox diffuser, but it doesn't end there. I also have one at the side to cancel shadows. This softbox is on a stand, so it can be moved around to illuminate other things in the workshop, like my old and now redundant bending rollers and there's also sufficient light to get a good image of the Clark metal worker. Fastened to the ceiling to the left of where I'm normally sitting, I have this, an array of four very bright LED bulbs. And I almost forgot, I don't use these very much, but I do have these strip lights all the way around the edge of the shelves. And I notice in this clip, one of them is not working, which is a bit odd because I don't use these very much. The two lights at each side of the milling machine and the aircon unit only light when I turn on the power for the machinery. And there you have it, my Clark metal worker is firmly installed on the bench and I'm quite looking forward to using this. As I mentioned in the previous episode, this is quite a lot of machine for not a lot of money. That's it for now, stay healthy, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.